Welcome once more to Power Wet uh, from Power and Praise Ministry. My name is Reverend Dr. Abel Dube, the lead pastor of Power and Praise Ministry. We believe in developing people, changing lives. That's the vision of the church. We're going to take our scripture reading from Genesis 18, uh, from verse 1 to 10. I'm not going to read all of it, and uh, this is just for your reference. I will just summarize the scripture so that we can get into the word. My title of, my title of today is Divine Visitations. Divine Visitations. Now, we see here uh, uh, in the scriptures that the Lord appeared unto the ox of May as he sat at the door of the tent that is Abraham on a, on a heat of a day. When he lifted up his eyes, he saw three men coming and then they were passing by. So he ran to meet them and then he ran to meet them and he uh, invited them into this house. And then he started uh, uh, asking, giving them water to wash their hands and uh, uh, doing all kind of uh, uh, offerings that he gave. Now, let me read uh, the scripture here and uh, on from verse 5. says, while I bring a morsel of bread that you may refresh yourself and after that you may pass on since you have come to your servant. So they said, do as you have said. Verse 6, and Abraham went quickly into the tent to Sarah and said, quick, three sears of fine flour, knead it and make cake. And Abraham ran to the head and took a calf tender, tender and good and gave it to the young man who prepared it quickly. Then he took cup and milk and the calf and he had prepared and set it before them. And he stood by them under the tree while they ate. They said to him, Where is Sarah your wife? Then he said, She is in the tent. The Lord said, I will surely return to you about this time next year and Sarah your wife shall have a son. And Sarah was listening at the tent door behind him him and then also the scripture on exodus 3 verse 7 to 8 you can write it down uh, that is when uh, uh, god was saying replying to the prayer of the of the hebrew children it says i've heard your cry i've seen your tears and i've heard all your groanings and i've come down to deliver you uh, uh, from your task matters task masters and i'll take you to a land that is flowing with milk and honey now divine visitation constitutes of men greatest opportunity for a change of story. Every divine visitation encounter changes the man's story dramatically. If you see it in the Bible, you will see that everyone who, who God visited, his story changed so dramatically. Things were not as usual, but things just shifted and changed dramatically. That means he forcefully invades the change of man's story. God will come into your life forcefully to change a man's story. Glory to God. Now, divine visitation. What is divine visitation? Divine visitation uh, uh, validates your waiting on God. When I say divine visitation, I mean something that will come to your life to validate the visitation of God. You will not need to tell people God visited me, but it will be visible that God surely visited you. Now, why does God visit you? He comes to prove uh, uh, to your enemies that you have been waiting on God and waiting on God was not in vain. He comes to visit you to remove shame from your life. He comes to visit you so that he can shift things around. Those who are looking down upon you, they begin to look up to you. Those who had forgotten about you, they begin to remember you. Why? Because God has come with a divine visitation. Glory to God. Now, God, who is called El Shaddai, decides to visit a man in his own house to announce to him that his season is coming to a change. Glory to God. He says, I come to visit you to show you or to prove to you or to announce to you that your season has come to a change. You have been praying, but finally your time has come. Now, glory to God. Divine visitation is when God opens a man's file in order to grant him urgent attention. When I say God is going to surely visit you, 
uh, it's something else. But when I say there's going to be a divine visitation, that means God will visit your file, open it, and grant you urgent attention. And say, this thing, this situation must change. This situation must have a, a new direction. Look, it looks like you are, you are praying, but nothing has happened. And suddenly, there's something, a shift happens in the atmosphere. Glory to God. Hear me. Waiting time is not wasted time. When we say wait on God, you are not wasting your time. There is a time of waiting, which is called a gestation period, which is called a waste waiting period. When you plant a seed in the ground, there is a germination, there is a, a planting time, but there's also a germination time. Between the planting and germination, there is something called a gestation, which is a process. It's a process. So when we wait on God, sometimes we are very adjective. We want to rush quickly. We want the answer to come now. But let me tell you something. God says, listen, while you are waiting, I'm giving attention to your file. While you are waiting, I'm giving attention to your, to your needs. Waiting time is not wasted time. Surely there is an end. And the expectation of the rushers shall not be cut off, says the scripture. Surely there is an end. The expectation of a rushers shall not be cut off. That means if you are a rushers person, if you are a believer, you must always stay with the expectations. Amen. Don't ever wake up in the morning and don't have expectations. Because divine visitation is going to meet you. When divine visitation meets you, it must meet your expectations. What are you expecting this morning? What are you expecting this afternoon? What are you expecting this evening? What are you expecting this day? What are you expecting this month? What are you expecting this year of 2020? What are you expecting in this decade? There must be an expectation. Why? Because the expectation of the rushes shall not be cut off. And surely, there must be an end. There are things that God wants to end in your life so that he can bring new, new things in your life. When he visits you, he doesn't visit you to bring you down. He visits you to lift you up. He visits you to promote you. He visits you to uplift you. He visits you, yes, to take you to places which you have never been before, which you have never even dreamt before. But you must always have an expectation that I'm moving forward and I'm moving ahead. You see? When you meet up with the prison, the prison moves away from protocol to, uh, uh, to, 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 to break out of protocol and start greeting people. Now, that person went into a, a, a gathering of a president, but he was always expecting that one day I'll meet the president, he'll shake my hand. Have you ever seen the smile of people? That when the president moves out of his protocol, he goes to greet an old woman, he goes to greet a young man. The expectation is so great because that person has always lived with the high expectation that I'll meet prayer. Now, this is what I'm talking about when I talk about God's divine visitation. God is, is like a president. He is uh, likened unto a president here. Yeah. You will move out of protocol, out of the, the, the way things are supposed to be done, the status quo, to branch out just for your file, to branch out just for you that is called divine visitation it's no longer the, uh, uh, for uh, uh, when we see the president moving away he says it's no longer of national importance now but it is now of personal importance it is not national importance for president to break out of protocol and greet an old woman but it is for personal importance glory to god now god says listen this your situation might not be of national importance but it might be of personal importance that's the situation I'm coming for. That's the situation I'm coming to bless you with. Glory to God. When they passed you, they said you are gone. When they looked at you, they said you can't make it. But let me tell you, God is about to visit you. Where they wrote you off, God is about to visit you. God, where you are not known, God says you shall be known. I will make you known. Glory to God. But Hear me. The Lord is saying, this is your hour. This is your season. This is your moment for divine visitation. Position yourself for divine visitation. Position yourself for divine visitation. Listen to, the, listen to me. The Bible says uh, uh, in the New Testament, there's a man called Nicodemus. Nicodemus was sitting and he was waiting. He was waiting. He was waiting for the passing of Jesus. He, he had an expectation. He knew today will be my divine visitation. Maybe he might not be able to see me. Maybe he might not be able, but I'm the one who will see him. And when he was waiting, hiding, and Jesus saw him and said, Nicodemus, come down because tonight 
we shall sup in your house. That was a divine visitation. Whatever the needs you have, wait on the Lord for you to get your breakthrough. You just have to wait. Don't give up now. Nicodemus was waiting. They said he's a short man, but he was waiting. They said he doesn't qualify. He was waiting. Whatever you need, even in your prayer, wait on God because divine visitation is coming. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Now, you see, Moses was the keeper of the ship. He was not only keeping his ship, he was keeping his father in lost ship. In a desert. Sitting in a desert. Quiet place. Divine visitation came. Hallelujah. Glory to God. A, a, a divine visitation came. In a quiet place, in a desert. You know, in a desert, nothing grows in a desert. You, you, you'll be sitting there and thinking that, number one, I don't have my own ship. Uh, I grew up uh, 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 in the king's house palace. I was treated like a prince. But now, I'm now heading my father-in-law's ship. I don't have anything of my own. But it was in a quiet place. And in that quiet place, God says, come, I want to talk to you. I want to talk to you. One encounter for Moses turned his whole destiny around. When he was sitting in that desert, heading his father's ship, God says, in your quiet time, there is an encounter. All your mandates, you will get it from this one encounter. Moses got all his mandate from one encounter of a divine visitation from the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. One encounter, all his mandate was settled. Every divine encounter with God will answer to genuine concentration and focus. Elijah and Elisha in the book of Kings, 2 Kings 2 verse 10. And he said, Thou hast asked a hard thing. Nevertheless, if thou see me when I am taken from them, from thee, it shall not be. It shall be so unto thee. But if not, it shall not be. If you see me go, divine visitation. You have to be available. You have to be there when I'm going. When I'm going, you have to be there for your divine encounter to happen. That's what uh, 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 Elisha had. Elisha had one encounter with a visitation and his life changed. Now, remember, Elisha was not really in the school of the prophets. Neither was he a candidate to get the anointing. But because of his availability, because of him, him presence near there, God visited him. Hallelujah. God surely visited him and he shifted his life around. Says, when you see me go, you get it. Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Walked upon Jerusalem. But because they did not understand and they did not know the day of their visitation, they became victims of their devastations. Many a times as believers, we must know the day of our visitation. The day of God's visitation in our lives. When God visits the nation, when God visits the land, when God visits the church, when God visits your family, you must not miss the day of New Because when you miss it, it becomes a, you become a victim of your devastation. Jacob said, God has been here and I knew not. That's in Genesis 28 verse 16. God has been here and I did not know. He missed his divine visitation. He nearly missed it. He says, I've been coming to this place. And I've been moving and doing all sorts of things. But I did not know that his God has been here. He nearly missed the day of his divine visitation. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Now, the same scripture we read, Exodus 3 verse 7, 8 says, I have seen your affliction. I have seen your affliction. God is a God who sees. 
He's a God who sees afflictions. People of God, every divine visitation is to terminate men's affliction. God wants to terminate your afflictions. When he visits you, he visits you to terminate your afflictions. He visits you to terminate what is troubling you. He visits you to terminate what is troubling your life. This visitation is to turn around someone's frustration into a testimony. He shifts frustrations. I mean, we are living in times where there is trauma. Trauma is everywhere. Fear is everywhere. Uncertainty is everywhere. But God says there is something called divine visitation. When I visit you, I'm going to remove that frustration into a testimony. Glory to God. Glory to God. He says, I'm bringing you a platform for instant interventions. Divine visitation is a platform for instant interventions. Let me tell you something. We all need instant interventions. And let me tell you, instant interventions are not something that you dream about. Are things which exist. Are things which are there. Because it is God who knows how to do them. Let me tell you, when God wants to bless you, he doesn't need to consult a committee. He doesn't need to consult anybody. He will jump everybody just for you. Why? Because he says, I'm a God of divine visitation. When I visit a man, I change his story dramatically. When I visit a man, I turn frustrations into testimonies. When I visit a man, I terminate men's afflictions in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Now, listen to this. There was a man in the Bible, a man in the pool of Bethesda. And this man was sitting there for 38 years, sitting in the pool of Bethesda. There was nobody to help him. And it, actually, this man had the wrong assumptions. You go to the pool of Bethesda where everybody is there waiting for the move in the waters. Nobody is going to help you. But as he was waiting there, hopeless case, Jesus appears for instant interventions. He appears, says, do you want to be well? Listen to the man's answer. Man, I have no man. God was not saying, explain your problem. He says, you just need to believe. Because the man of divine interventions, the man of divine encounters was here. Jesus himself had arrived. He says, do you want to be well? He says, pick up your bed and walk. Take up your bed and walk. Be set free for instant interventions. Be set free. Rise up. Pick up your bed and walk. Glory to God. God visits you to terminate your frustrations. To give you a testimony. Glory to God. Now, every divine visitation is affected through human vessels. Effected through human vessels. Every divine visitation is effected through human vessels. By a prophet, he brought Israel out of Egypt. By a prophet, he preserved them. God was one working through Moses. says, I am God, I change not. Glory to God. Lazarus and the rich man. They are now in heaven. And God says to the rich man, the rich man says to God, God, eh, 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 ask Lazarus to go and fetch water. God says, there is a thin line. There is a thin line. You can't go there. And then the, the rich man says, okay, fine. Eh, 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 send, eh, 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 go and send someone to go and talk to my people. Eh, send Lazarus to go and talk to my people. Or let me go and warn my people. And God says, no, 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 no. The Moses is down there. You will warn them. You refuse. You missed your day of visitation. May you never miss your opportunity for day of visitation. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Now, we read the scripture here uh, where God is talking uh, to Abraham. And uh, uh, Abraham is receiving a change of story. He's receiving a change of story. Glory to God. Glory to God. Abraham had believed God for a child. He, was, he had no child. His wife Sarah was barren. But three men come. And as they come into the house, 
Abraham took note that these men are coming here. Let me do something peculiar for these men. He started going, looking for offerings, looking for milk, looking for, for water to wash hands, looking for water to drink, looking for everything, killing the, the, the fat calf and preparing it and let them eat. And then when they had eaten, they said, this today, Abraham, is a day of your visitation. Where is Sarah, your wife? He says, bring her here and tell her by this time next year, there shall be a cry of a baby. That was a change of story. That was an instant intervention in Abraham's thing. Abraham did not need to even pray about it because God had listened to a cry and God had come and had come to deliver him. Same as he did to the children of Israel. Glory to God. Now, what do you do to get... Uh, 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 divine visitation. Number one. Psalms 50 verse 5 to 6 says, Gather my sins together unto me, those that have made a covenant with my, me by sacrifice, and the heavens shall declare the righteousness for God is judge himself. You need to maximize the miracle power of divine visitation. Now, God says here, I will show up. I will rise. I will manifest myself. And when do I rise? I rise in that altar of sacrifice. Abraham sacrificed to God. What is that sacrifice? He gave to God. He sacrificed to God. First of all, he ran. He gave them water. They did not even need any water. But he offered to God. That's offering to the man. And that was like offering to God. And you can say, but those were not God. Those were three men. No, but let me tell you something. You can say they were angels. In my theology, or in my understanding of scriptures, man is not supposed to bow to angels. But the Bible says Abraham knelt down and he bowed to them. That means those three, one of them was the Christ, was representing the Christ among the three. So it was the, 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 the representing uh, 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 God, the Holy Spirit and Christ. And one of them was Christ. Someone can argue on that, but we can sit down and then we can break down the scripture and find out that it was the Christ. Because Abraham was a friend of God. He was never going to bow to angels. But you realize that there's something peculiar about this visitation. This is God's visitation into my house through Christ. And all of a sudden, there was a change of story. Glory to God. Now, God will show up, but we need to have an altar of sacrifice. You need to renew your altar of sacrifice. Prayer is enough. We pray, but we need to sacrifice. We need to give to God what cost us something. Abraham was told by God, go and give your son, your only son. Did God need his son? No. God was testing the heart. So sacrifice comes from the heart. Hallelujah. Sacrifice comes from what? It's, it's not about uh, 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 looking for big things to give to God, but it's about your heart. What you value more. If you give it to God, God knows how to bring divine visitation into your house or into your doorstep. Hallelujah. Now, you can maximize the miracle power of divine visitation by renewing an altar of sacrifice. Now, Abraham, Isaac, God responded by the same hour. says, I swear by myself, says the Lord. I swear by myself. When Abraham put Isaac, he lifted up the knife. God says, stop it. Now I know your heart. You are my friend. From now, you are my friend. I swear by my heart. He swear by his heart because of a sacrifice. God, you can move God by your sacrifice. And you make God swear by his heart. Glory to God. There is something called generational blessings that, can, that are provoked by a sacrifice. Abraham sacrificed Isaac. And God brought a generational blessing. I know many times we, we love to talk about generational cases. You know, when you talk about generational cases, everybody begins to move into the screen or move into church and to here. There's something called generational blessings. 
Abraham got a generation of blessing and it fell among Isaac, it fell among Jacob, it fell among Joseph. Every generation, they were blessed because of a generational blessing and it was provoked by a sacrifice. Hallelujah. Divine visitation is provoked by a sacrifice. Supernatural favor. Egypt got supernatural favor because they knew how to sacrifice. Uh, uh, the children of Israel. They knew how to sacrifice. And that's why God delivered them from, from Egypt. Because they knew the sac how to do the sacrifice. They got the blessing of favor. Glory to God. Now, it is grace that makes one great. It's not the cleverness. And grace is divine favor. Paul says, I am what I am by the grace of God. No one is greater than the grace of that he has. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Nobody is greater than the grace that he has. I'll say again, divine visitation will make you stand out. It will change your story. Somebody is rising up today. God is changing your story dramatically. Nothing is permitted to remain stagnant in your life again. Nothing is permitted to remain stagnant in your life forever. Every time God comes down, favor flows freely. Every time God comes down, Favor flows freely. I see favor upon you. I see favor coming to you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I see favor coming to your family in the name of Jesus Christ. I see favor coming even to your ministry in the mighty name of Jesus. Every time God comes down, favor flows freely. But you need to renew your altar of sacrifice. Hallelujah. Renewing your altar of sacrifice. Generational blessings will be provoked. Generational blessing, your children will never struggle again. Your family will never struggle again. Your church will never struggle again. Your people will never struggle again because of somebody who knows how to trigger the blessing from God in Jesus' holy name. And I want to encourage you right now that you need to prepare an offering. And as you prepare that offering, it is going to be like a sacrifice to you. Whatever it is, it's a sacrifice to you. And I say, I want to sow it into the ministry. I want to sow it to the house of God. I want to sow it to the kingdom of God. Or even, I want to sow it uh, 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 to God. Because men of God can represent uh, uh, the, the move of God. Like the three men came and Abraham did, gave them water. God doesn't drink water, but he gave these men water. He says, uh, 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 he brought the meat. Uh, he gave them, they ate the meat. So you can even take it to the men of God. Take it to your men of God. Take it to your woman of God. Take it to your church. Send it to the account and put it in the account and say, this is my sacrifice for divine visitation and may God visit me. And let me tell you, God will surely visit you. Spiritual things are for spiritual, uh, spiritual uh, 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 things are for the spiritually discerning people. And carnal things are for the carnally people. May God bless you as you sow your seed, as you give today, uh, as you plant your, your seed or, or when you, as you raise up an altar of sacrifice in your house or wherever you are in Jesus name. God bless you. My name is Reverend Dr. Abel Dube from Power Word. Let's meet again on the next session on part two. God bless you.